everyone, great to see you. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a roundabout. We're focusing on the principle of balance. Balance means that both sides of the artwork don't look heavier than each other. They sort of look, you know, the same. Okay, here we go. Hopefully last week you cut out your four squares of cardboard that were 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. You can see that I've used one of my squares and a grey lead pencil to trace four squares onto my A4 sheet of paper. All right, now there's some rules about creating the roundabout. One of the first things you've got to do is divide your cardboard into half. You don't actually have to do it. You just have to know where halfway is. So I've just put a bit of a dotted line so I know where halfway is. I... There's some rules about creating your roundabout. You can either do a static straight lined roundabout or you can use a more curved moving line using our past knowledge or you can combine, it's up to you. But there's a couple of rules about creating your roundabout. First one is that you need to mark about a centimetre in at least, it can be more, on the same side. Can you see up the top that I've marked it in about a centimetre? Because my shape is going to start on one dot, go past the halfway mark and finish on the other dot. I must not cut off the corners and it must go past halfway. And you need to keep it simple. All right, so there's my design. I've started on one dot, I've gone past the halfway mark and back to the other dot. I'll also do a curved one. So I've, I've put my two dots again. There's my halfway mark. Now I'm going to create a curved but simple, keep it simple, design. Here we go. Cutting out. So you've got to try and do it all in one go. So there's my roundabout. This Now we're actually going to draw the roundabout. So you're going to need your A4 piece of paper that you traced four squares on. So I am putting it accurately on top. I'm tracing the inside shape. You can see what once looks like. Then I turn my stencil my roundabout once and I trace that shape again accurately there's what twice looks like then I turn it again so now my shape is completely upside down trace it accurately that's what three times looks like and now I need to trace so that the shape is to the west. That is my design. You will notice because we've turned it four times, there are four of each shape. One, two, three, four. There is one, two, three, four of that one. When you go to outline everything, do use your stencil again and do use a ruler for the outside of your work so that your work is professionally presented. So I'm gonna now I'm going to uh, use my colors. Now, if I was in grade four, which is monochromatic colors, I can find all the colors of textures, pencils, watercolors, anything that I wanna use in my one color. So I've found all of the greens. If you're a grade three, four, three person, you might be doing um, orange and blue as your complementary colors. If you're a grade five person, you might be doing your neutral colors. And if you're a grade six person, you would be picking your tetratic color, color scheme. The idea when you color this is to make sure the pattern stands out. We talked about this four of every shape. So if you're going to color this shape in this green, then that shape in all four positions must be the same green. Um, you can see that I've used tone in the middle here. 
I've just used one pencil but I've pressed harder in the center and gone lighter towards the outside to create a bit of a different effect. Also in these section here I have done swirling pencil work so that it looks more textured and you'll notice that this one's outlined in black and this one I tried outlining in green. I've still stuck to my monochromatic colors but I tried a couple of different experiments. Okay, I've now cut out my two roundabout. Okay, so I now need another good piece of A4 piece of paper. And I'm actually going to put a frame around the edge of my work so that it, A, gives it a frame, and B, it actually cuts down on the amount of space that I need to fill. Okay, here's my frame done in black. And now I'm going to use a glue stick and glue down my roundabouts. I want to create space or depth. I want my work to look like some things are in front and some things are behind. Um, so that's, I'm going to overlap my roundabouts so that I do create that depth. Does it matter if it sticks out over your frame? Yes, I would, I, if it was me, if it was hanging out over the edge, I would actually cut it so it's not hanging out over the edge. So now, oh yeah, see, two's enough. So you can see one of my roundabouts now looks like it's behind the other one. So it's giving space or depth. Also, the very last thing I need to do at this stage is in the bottom right hand corner, you just need to write your first name and your grade. The next video will be about patterning the spaces inside your frame with Zentangle.